I just had to lay the baby down because she was all up in the screen and messing with the tripod and obviously very tired. Um, came outside to get away from children so I could film this and somehow it ended up that they all followed me out. But I do feel like I should be in my kitchen, but I just have be better lighting outside and probably better um, sound too. So pantry challenge recap. Um, I've got, I got my notes. I haven't gone through them in a while. It's so uh, we've stopped the challenge basically. Um, and I'm back to buying all my meat, um, which is basically what I buy. But let's go through this list. Um, these are the items that I used up. Um, these are going to start out with freezer items. There was uh, some baby food that I used up that I had made, um, particularly uh, some, let's see, sweet potato, apple, squash mixture, um, avocado, cauliflower rice, liver, um, which actually we didn't eat a whole lot of. I think I just ended up giving that to the dogs. And um, some fermented pear chutney, which I was, I was pretty proud of. I didn't think I would ever use it, but I stuck it in some smoothies and nobody knew any different. Um, I had packs of liver um, that were uh, decent quality that um, I just have lost any taste for liver recently. And But we did, we were able to to go through, I think, four packs of liver. Um, so I ate, We I cooked it once a week. And look, I'm, I guess I didn't even make it through three weeks of this pantry challenge, so um, I guess we did two good full weeks and then I kind of slacked off there on the third week. I think I really stopped at around January 23rd-ish, but we had gone away for the weekend, so that weekend didn't count anyways. Two and a half weeks is probably what we did. Um, I went through two four four cups of shredded zucchini that was in the freezer from at least two summers ago which i was pretty proud of we made zucchini bread it was very good um okra oh do i see this these are um, just frozen vegetables okra sweet potato green beans butter beans zipper peas sweet corn um and then i had a couple of bags of beef bones that i was planning on making bone broth with that i i did do so i got two batches of bone broth from that um, I also had a bag of rye flour that I went through also, and that was good because I never would have even touched that. That would have sat there forever. Um, now for the, that was the freezer stuff. Then I had in my fridge, I had some fish sauce. I think I showed it on one of the, the videos. Um, I don't remember why I bought it. I'm sure it had something to do with some research that I was doing about alternatives to soy sauce. Um, but I looked it up. This, again, would have been an item I never would have considered using. Um, but I looked it up and it sounds like it's similar to just like Worcestershire or whatever, however you pronounce that W word. I can never pronounce it right. Um, Worcestershire? I, no, I don't even try. When I used to wait on tables, I used to just say, you know, we have A1, Heinz 57, and that W one. And, you know, let people chuckle about that. So um, fish sauce and so I've just been adding like a dash into like any kind of like stew or soup or anything like that and it's great. Um, and I think it's added um, protein too because it's made from like anchovies or something. So um, let's see on my pantry shelves I went through, I did try to use flaxseed and we'll come back to that. Um, I only used it like one time and I think I used it for like a replacement for like breadcrumbs and when I tried to make the tuna patties. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, pumpkin seed. Uh, you know, one of those things that I just bought in bulk one time from Azure Standard and I, they were just sitting there. You know, I just lost a taste for them or whatever. So, um, And also, any seeds or nuts that I... Now we have chickens coming to join us. Great. Um, any seeds or nuts or grains, I try to um, soak first and prepare um, traditionally so it is it's not just like a, oh you buy like um, you know whatever nuts seeds or grains and you know just boom you know that you have them to snack on it's like you know you have these steps that you have to take to prepare them well when I was you know my my carnivore tendencies I'm just like ah oh, well you know hamburger patties it's you know super easy and I don't have to go through all these steps but um, it was good. It was good to force myself to do the right things to prepare the right kinds of foods. And I, and I, I was pretty proud of what I did. 
So um, we've got pumpkin seeds to snack on now. They just need to be soaked and then um, dried out. Chia seeds. I, I think I tried to make the kids some chia pudding. They weren't crazy about it. Some kids liked it. Some kinds of kids didn't. Um, and I still have a lot of chia seeds, so they're not going anywhere fast. Um, I think I had originally ordered a five pound bag, so I still have quite a bit. Um, barley, I, I had some barley that I, gosh, I don't even know how long I'd had it in my pantry. And um, so I was able to add that to a soup. I think only once, I think I only did the barley once. Um, millet. And this was a grain that I really don't remember why I bought it. And I think I was just in a phase of, you know, buying different grains. And again, it was one that you have to prepare properly. And so I made millet porridge out of it. And I think I made it twice. And, and that was it. And it was good. Um, I ha also had some leftover masa flour. I think that's how you pronounce it. And polenta, which again, two things, well... The polenta I remember buying just because, I don't know, I think maybe I was buying grits and then I realized it was polenta. Anyways, I used those up really early on with some cornbread. I also had lentils that I used up um, and those were really good. I really enjoyed those. I had some brown rice that I used up. So all of these things are not things we eat on a, on a normal um, daily basis. They're all sort of weird different things that, well not weird, but weird for us, um, but that I had in my pantry. Um, small amounts of quinoa quinoa that I had was some kind of whole grain it was black brown and black and red or something like that and you know I didn't mind the taste of it I tried it for a breakfast porridge um, pretty sure I ended up throwing the rest away there wasn't a whole lot left but I was, was not crazy about it and the kids weren't crazy about it it was just not appealing to me I think it was the texture I'm not sure Maybe if I've, I had eat it, eaten it as a savory dish instead of trying to do a porridge type thing. I don't know. I think I just gave up on it after trying it that one time. I mean, but this was quinoa I had had for years, you know, and so maybe it was, I don't know. So there was a lot of dried beans, and then we'll probably come back to this. Um, I had been given some just, you know, pound dried beans and I when I accepted them you know I was just like oh I'm never gonna use these and I threw them in the you know back bedroom pantry um, but we'll come back to that uh, wheat berries I did I used several batches I'll grind up batches in my in my grain mill and my kit using my KitchenAid which another thing I, I want to come back to KitchenAid apparently it's broken now and I'm so sad because I was really using it a lot all right, um, so yeah, wheat berries, uh, I think I made um, some hot cereal out of the wheat a couple of times and then I just was adding it to my sourdough baking goods. Elderberries and gelatin. I made some elderberry syrup and then I added the gelatin and so I made like elderberry gummies. Thank you, um, Quiet and Orderly Life, because <laughs> that's where I got the, the recipe from or the, the idea from. Popcorn, we, I, I need to put in a clip of how much popcorn we have left. Popcorn is, is, it's amazing. It's amazing how little you use. I didn't believe it at first. When I planted popcorn, I think it was two or three years ago now, my dad said, oh, you don't need that much. And I was like, Psh, you know, we go through a ton of popcorn. What are you talking about? We'll use all of this easy. And no, it is still sitting there. This is going on two years and it's like half a bushel full and we haven't even like shelled it or anything. So yeah, popcorn. Um, I've been really enjoying making a big batch of popcorn on Friday nights for the kids and, and Zach. Um, peanuts, look, I gave up on peanuts. We grew peanuts last year. They were sitting in two like half bushel baskets. The chickens started laying in them. They were outside on the back porch and there was a chicken that started laying her eggs in them. And so I was like, mm, no, I don't think I'm gonna end up doing anything with those. You know, we might save them for seed, so. All right, sweet potatoes. I went, I did, went through the last of our, our sweet potatoes. I do still have some um, in the freezer though. And butternut squash. I tried to use up um, some. We still have some left to go through, uh, smaller ones. But uh, I'm trying to think of the last thing I made with butternut squash. I want to say I, I made a cake recently. Yes, that's right. I made a cake recently with um, butternut squash. All right. And that was a not exhaustive list, but that was pretty close to it.
I want to go back to um, a couple of notes. First of all, the flaxseed. Researching flaxseed, I was like, and I think I knew this already. I'm not sure. I probably didn't know it when I bought it, but um, it is in like an estrogen fixer or mimicker. So that was one of the reasons why I was hesitant to use it for anything. I know. I, I, I remember why I bought it. I bought it for an alternative for me for um, like oatmeal in the morning and you can make this like pour it like keto porridge or whatever for, um, from flaxseed and ground up nuts and but once I read about once I found out about the estrogen thing I was hesitant to use it at all and so I think I'm just gonna end up giving it to our chickens um, I know it's sad to waste things but I feel like that's probably where that's gonna go I haven't yet but um, and then the dried beans. So when I was first, when I first started the challenge, now I haven't watched many of these videos at all of other people's challenges or or the Three Rivers Homestead challenge videos, but I did start watching them. And one thing that she talked about, the Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, was that she, when she has all these empty jars from using up stuff, she likes to fill them with proteins. So that's what I did. I I took those bags. I think it was maybe four pounds of um, dried beans, and I canned those dried beans so that was awesome and I realized how easy it was to do that and so I'll, I'll probably get more in the habit of doing that because it's so much easier to open a jar of already cooked beans and heat them up than it is to go through the whole motions of soaking and overnight and then the long cooking time um, so that was great I learned that from her um, also one of the other tips that she had that I wish I had focused more on in the beginning was using up the stuff from the freezer first. So I was going the easy route and opening up the cans of butter beans or whatever, jars of butter, butter beans, whereas I should have been pulling from the freezer the whole time. It makes sense. You're freeing up freezer space um, that's not shelf stable. You don't want to use up your shelf stable stuff first, right? So in case your freezer goes down, you're not going to have to do anything with all that stuff. So that was a good tip I wish I'd done more of. I did have another note to make okra there's a couple of bags of frozen okra still in the freezer and the one time that I made it for the kids I think maybe that's twice maybe I tried to fry some up and then the other time yeah I fried some okra up and the other time I just tried to slip it in a stew or soup um, to no success I don't have any okra uh, eaters as far as cooked okra and it's weird because they'll some of them will eat it straight off the plant in the summertime um, but I don't know if I'll bother trying to freeze okra anymore um, or if I'll just feed it the chickens or whatever when I have surplus left over from the farmers market which is normally you know why I grow it is to sell it um, yeah so that was just a side note and then let's see uh, I think that was about it I ran out of a few things um, Let's see, any kind of tomato products I ran out of. So I couldn't do any sort of like tomato-y pasta thing at all. Um, or ketchup. My kids uh, unfortunately do go through quite a bit of ketchup. So I'm going to make a note to have tomato paste. A good stockpile of tomato paste. I want to really stock up. And then um, of course stocking up on, I, I just want to keep canning meat as much as possible. And. Uh, and I've been trying to do that. I've got, we've got some, I've got some ground beef on the shelves now and some um, stew beef. So, yay! <laughs> I, I definitely learned a lot from this challenge. I learned, you know, definitely to, to have more supply of meat um, available. So the downside of this challenge for me was that it did feel like there was way too many carbs. I was eating, we were eating way too many carbs, way too many bread products. Um, and starches um, and not enough good proteins. I mean, I really feel like animal proteins are superior to, uh, to legumes and all that. So, um, and that was a downside. Let's see. The good side of that, the upside of all those carbs was that I got good at certain sourdough products where, you know, I got a lot of practice. I got, um, I'm all about the tortillas now. I got really good at sourdough tortillas, so um, I, I think that's going to be a, a, something that keeps in the rotation is, you know, sourdough, tor sourdough tortillas with either just beans as a filling or 
both beans and ground beef. But um, yeah, I don't I don't have to buy tortillas anymore. And I think I was buying just regular tortillas a little bit from Azure Standard just to have a backup when we did want to do burritos. But um, I feel pretty confident now in the sourdough ones that I make. Um, the other thing about having all of those uh, carbs is that we went through a lot of sweetener you know we were having porridge every morning oatmeal every morning instead of eggs so we went through a lot of maple syrup a lot of honey and it's it's interesting though because that is what they say about vegan diets or vegetarian diets is that because the lack of you know the the healthy saturated fats and the you know animal um, proteins is that they feel they do they have a lot of um, sweets cravings and um, so they eat they do end up eating a lot of carbs and and sugar and whatnot um, so I thought that was very interesting um, I had a couple of kids that changed their eating tastes I had one kid who embraced the beans and I think that's wonderful he was the picky eater before and then the whole thing with the bacon came out wonderfully um, and was really a game changer for me. And that's, you know, in going on, you know, like um, continuing on. Uh, we have, I think, smoked three now, three, maybe two, two briskets. And um, it's just wonderful. It's it's totally brought um, new life to the <laughs> to the kitchen. And it's it's wonderful. Um, the other pro of doing the challenge was that I'm, I'm back cloth diapering. And um, that's because I ran out of diapers way early on and I decided to just go back to cloth diapering. And um, we even got a sprayer for the for the commode. So um, I don't know why it's taken me this long to get one. <laughs> and um, so that was, that was really a good bonus. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's, oh, I did leave out some of the other canned um, vegetables that we went through, just some random canned veg that people have given us, mixed veg, black beans, pinto beans, those are all just given, because I don't normally buy any canned goods. Um, but yeah, I was going to come back to my KitchenAid um, point I was, I was going to mention was that it broke, and I don't know how to service it. If anybody knows, let me know. And I think that's it. That's a, a wrap up for this pantry challenge. And um, I look forward to doing it again next year. Uh, hopefully my kids will <laughs> will not um, be too mad. But, you know, what, what are you going to do? All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye.